everyone, and welcome to Metagame Mastery, where it's not just about what the card does, but how it impacts the game. Where the Spark Preview season will never end. And today we have God Eternal Aketra, Sarkon, and many more. If you enjoy this content, click that like button, and make sure you're subscribed to get access to all our latest videos. Without further ado, big time! Go time! Let's go. Nicobolus, Dragon God, is officially confirmed. He's 5 CMC, a blue, 3 black, and a red for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 4. He has a static ability where he has the loyalty abilities of all other planeswalkers on the battlefield. He also has a plus 1. You draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control. A minus three ability, destroy target creature or planeswalker, and a minus eight ability. Each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. This thing is just sick. He's going to be awesome in any deck that can manage to swing that very color-intensive mana cost. He is perpetual card advantage. He can get whatever abilities that... Um, both your planeswalkers or even your opponent's planeswalkers have access to and he's going to be able to give you repeated removal on top of if you manage to pop off his ultimate then more often than not that's going to win you the game this thing is awesome commence the end game is remarkably appropriate since the pre-release is the weekend of Avengers Endgame release, but moving on, moving on. 6 CMC, 4 colorless, and 2 blue for an instant. This spell can't be countered. Draw 2 cards, then a mass X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. So at worst, say this is the last card you play, this will get you a 2-2 two -two on the board. But more often than not, this is going to get you a very large amass token. It's six mana, draw two cards, cannot be countered, plus get a really big body on the board. All in all, I'd say that's pretty decent, especially in limited. Jace Arcane Strategist is a Planeswalker deck exclusive Planeswalker. He's six CMC, four colorless, and two blue for a legendary Planeswalker with a starting loyalty of four. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature you control. It's a plus one ability, draw a card. Minus seven ability, creatures you control can't be blocked this turn. So he's going to play really well with Commence the End Game, uh, getting you plus one plus one counters on your opponent's turn. He's also going to interact very positively with amass cards. Overall, I don't think this is the best Planeswalker deck Planeswalker. I'm certainly not going to see any standard play, but I was impressed with just how synergistic this deck is looking to be. Uh, his plus one ability will ensure that you get to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature during each of your turns, and his minus seven ability could very easily win you the game. Jace's Ruse is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, 2 blue for a sorcery. Return up to 2 target creatures to their owner's hands. You may search your library and or graveyard for a card named Jace Arcade Strategist. Reveal it and put it at your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. So this is a fine card. Uh, a lot of these tutors and Planeswalker decks, they're very hit or miss as to whether or not they have an effect that's even worth pairing with the tutor ability. But this is double removal on top of being able to tutor up your Planeswalker card. Jace's projection is 4 CMC, 2 colorless, and 2 blue for a 2-2 two -two Wizard Illusion. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Jace's projection. You can also pay 3 colorless and a blue, put a loyalty counter on target Jace Planeswalker. So this is inferior to Toothy and therefore won't see play in Eternal Formats. It's probably not going to see any significant play in Standard. But for people who are just starting out, this is a nice introduction to uh, card advantage synergies. It plays very well with the Jace Planeswalker. And overall, just being able to draw cards and add plus one plus one counters, this deck looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Lastly, we have Guild Pact Informant. 
three CMC, two colorless, and a blue for a 1-1 one, one Fairy Rogue with flying. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, proliferate. So this is the last of the four cards that are exclusive to the Jace Planeswalker deck. That said, this might be the one that sees the most play. I could see this slotting very easily into Azuri Cloth Progress EDH. Asterix Skulker is 5 CMC, 4 colorless and a blue for a 3-5 Nightmare. You can pay 3 colorless and a blue, and it can't be blocked this turn. So normally, a 3-5 five for 5 is below curve. I wouldn't recommend playing it. I mean, it doesn't even have keywords. But, in this format where there's going to be so many Planeswalkers and Limited, Unblockable is effectively a form of Planeswalker removal. And that makes this a card where you could dump mana into it and keep nixing Planeswalkers off the board. So because of that, because of the specifics of the limited format, I think this is actually worth running. Ashy Hook Dream Render is 3 CMC, 1 colorless, and any combination of 2 blue or 2 black for a legendary Planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 5. His static ability is spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their control or search the library. Full stop. If you want to lose friends and commander, play this card. He also has a minus 1 ability. Target player puts the top 4 cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. Okay. This card's so good. <laughs> this is really good. It's fine and limited because being able to mill 20 cards off of your opponent's 40 card deck is a very powerful effect. Um, even if it is over the course of five turns, that's fine. This is solid. In Commander, searching your deck is so pivotal in any singleton format this is going to definitely draw aggro, but the fact that it exclusively affects your opponents and every time you activate his ability, you exile all other players' graveyards, that's extremely relevant in the format. Deliver Unto Evil is 3 CMC, 2 colorless and a black for a sorcery. Choose up to 4 target cards in your graveyard. If you control a Bull's Planeswalker, return those cards to your hand. Otherwise, an opponent chooses 2 of them. Leave the chosen cards in your graveyard and put the rest into your hand. Exile, Deliver Unto Evil. So, I don't imagine this is going to be super powerful and limited. I don't even know if this has a place in standard, but... Decks where you manage to dump your entire library into your graveyard, this becomes a black Gifts Ungiven. And that is an extremely powerful effect. Now, it's a little bit narrower, obviously, but it's also cheaper. And look at that artwork. I imagine this one's going to see a lot of play in the right decks. The Elder Spell is two black mana for sorcery. Destroy any number of target Planeswalkers. Choose a Planeswalker you control, put two loyalty counters on it for each Planeswalker destroyed this way. Sick! Sick! Two mana for a one-sided Planeswalker-specific board wipe. And you it has upside. This is ridiculous. This is out of control. Cool. Like, yeah, it's standard. This is... Strictly going in sideboards because it's so narrow. In Limited, this is just going to completely demolish your opponents. In, in Commander, this is the I beat your Atraxa deck card. <laughs> this is great. Spark Harvest is one black mana for sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature, or pay three colorless and a black. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. So, we have sort of a more versatile Bone Splinters, and we're seeing more and more of these effects that would play well in an Aristocrats deck. Uh, they specifically interact with Planeswalkers instead of just creatures, and we've been talking about whether or not an Aristocrats deck can 
make it in standard for about a year now uh, since Dominaria previews. And I'm really feeling like there's so many effects in this set that we could legitimately see it happen. This is going to be extremely powerful in that deck. And it's also great and limited. Just being able to nix your opponent's uh, Planeswalker or Creature, even paying 5 mana for that is fine. But if you can get it for cheaper, all the better. This card is solid. Spark Reaper is... 3 CMC, 2 colorless, and a black for a 2-3 zombie. Pay 3 colorless, sacrifice a creature or a planeswalker, you gain 1 life and draw a card. So, it's kind of a vampiric rights on legs, but it costs a little bit more, obviously. The upside being, you could sacrifice planeswalkers that you've mostly depleted instead of just creatures. I don't know if that's going to make a huge difference, but it should be a solid option in Limited. Blast Zone is a land that enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it. It taps for a colorless mana, or you could pay XX and tap it to put X charge counters on it. You could pay three colorless, tap it, and sacrifice it to destroy all non-land permanents with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Blast Zone. So we have a land version of engineered explosives, sort of. It starts with at least one charge counter. So you won't be able to play it for zero. It's not going to obviously uh, fit into Cheerios decks or artifact recursion combos the way engineered explosives does. But on the upside, it cannot be countered uh, unless somebody stifles the ability. Let's just put that as a one-off and move on this is extremely powerful and I imagine this is actually going to benefit Tron decks as it'll slot right into those decks very easily this card is absolutely sick it just on its own it's pay three mana to and sack it to kill Delver like every Delver on the board that's really solid. This is a good card. Watley's Raptor is 2 CMC, green and white for a 2-3 dinosaur with vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, proliferate. So good. Just, this is absolutely a solid card. You're getting a 2-3 with, with upside and an ETB effect for only 2 mana. This is really, really playable. Watley, Heart of the Sun, is 2 CMC and either a green or a white. For a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 7. For 3 mana, starting loyalty of 7. Some of these uncommon planeswalkers are just sick with the amount of economy that they provide. Her static ability... Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So it's a toughness matters planeswalker. This is going to play great with Arcadis. And it's also going to go into a variety of other decks such as Doran, the Siege Tower, and EDH. We needed more of these effects and we got it on a planeswalker? And she has a minus three ability. You gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. Which is like, okay, life gain. It's not going to win you games. It's great if you have a Johnny's Pride Mate or something in play. But just her static ability alone, for that cost, and on a Planeswalker body, so it's so extremely difficult to remove, is awesome! Planar Celebration is 7 CMC, 5 colorless, and 2 green for a sorcery. Choose 4. You can choose the same mode more than once. Create a 2-2 two -two creature token that has all colors. Put a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Proliferate or gain 4 life. So this card is 
an absolute limited bomb. You're paying seven mana to put eight power and toughness on the board, or gain 16 life, or pull four cards from your graveyard into your hand, making for massive card advantage, or proliferate four times, or any combination thereof. This is so versatile, the fact that it gives you the options, and that in spite of its very high cost, and it is a very high cost, that's going to keep it from seeing play in most constructed formats, but in spite of it, the versatility makes this extremely powerful. It's whatever effect you need it to be several times over in the limited format, and that's sick. Here she is, the one we've been waiting for, God Eternal Aketra. She's 5 CMC, 3 colorless, and 2 white for a 3-6 legendary zombie god with double strike. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior token with vigilance. When God Eternal Aketra dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. Wait, full stop. Whenever you cast any creature spell, you get a 4-4 Black Zombie Warrior with Vigilance? Oh crap! This card has so much value! I can't even... I'm, I'm freaking out! It's so good! You're paying 5 mana for a 6-6 six, six attacker that has additional resilience, it interacts with Zombie Tribal, and on top of all that... Whenever you cast a spell from that point forward, that's of course a creature, you're getting an additional 4-4 on top of it? That's nuts! This could easily slot into darn near any deck that runs white, and you'll get great value off of it. But, I'll say this. When Commander 2018 came out and it introduced Asper Zombie Tribal, I was very skeptical. I'm a staunch Scarab God loyalist. I think he has great value. But Oketra is a huge incentive for me to actually take a long look at Verena Lich Queen because that card is sick. Sarkon the Masterless is 5 CMC, 3 colorless, red red, for a legendary planeswalker with a starting loyalty of 5. His static ability is, get this, whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals 1 point of damage to that creature. He has a plus 1 ability, get this, until end of turn, each planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 four, four red dragon and gains flying. And he has a minus 3 ability, create a 4-4 four, four dragon creature token with flying. Wow, everything on this is good. First, he can protect himself by creating a 4-4 creature token. Second, once he has the dragons in play, or if you already have dragons in play, he is in red after all, then he creates a sort of firewall that any creature that's going to attack you or Sarkon or any other planeswalker you control has to first survive X amount of damage before blockers are even declared and before it can even deal damage to you or those planeswalkers. And then lastly, he turns all of your super friends into flying death machines. This is an absolute finisher in Limited. This has so much potential in uh, big red decks. And on top of all that, EDH Dragon Tribal loves this. This is outstanding. It's so good. There's so much value. He's also especially good with dragons that have death touch, like Dragon Lord, Sulungar, or Acid Spewer Dragon. Because when the the creatures your opponents have attack, it's the dragon that deals damage to it uh, through his ability. But it's the dragon dealing damage. Therefore, having one of these in play, they will instantly kill any creature sent to attack you before blockers are even declared. Oh my god, the value! That's it for today. If you enjoy this content, click that subscribe button so you get access to all our latest videos. This has been Metagame Mastery. Peace!